Hello, hello, this is Father Adam with some good news that I know you can use. In the story of the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus multiplies the five loaves of bread and the two fish, we hear about the heart of God. The heart of God that says, pick up the leftovers. I don't want anything to be wasted. Now, there are 5,000 men there. Now, it doesn't mean that there were just men there because this particular gospel, it's the gospel of John, which is written for a Jewish audience. And Jews did not count women or children. That's why it says just men. But there were men, women, and children there. And it doesn't mean that there were 5,000 people literally there because we don't take the Bible literally. We take the Bible seriously. And when the Bible says, thousands. It doesn't mean that there were literally thousands of people there. There were just many, many people there and they were all filled in a way that satisfied them, which is what Jesus wants to happen in your life, that you have him come into your life in such a way that satisfies you, that fills you, that satisfies all of your hungers, whatever hungers you may be experiencing in your life. They may be hungers of love, hungers for meaning, hunger of hope. He wants that to happen in your life. Our God is the God that says after they are all fed with the five loaves and the two fish, pick up the pieces. I don't want anything to be wasted. Our God is the God of the leftovers, the fragments, and 12 wicker baskets are filled with the pieces of bread. That is the heart of God that is revealed here. The heart of God that we know leaves the 99 sheep and goes after the one lost one because God is not satisfied, not fulfilled. There's something missing in God when he doesn't have all of his children with him. The number 100 in the Bible means completeness, fulfillment. 99 is a number that is incomplete unfulfilled. God is incomplete without all of his children with him. It's the, the, the God who is the woman in Luke 15 in the Bible that goes through the whole house, cleaning the house, searching the whole house, turns the whole house upside down and over looking for the one lost coin when she has nine, but she lost one because she wants all of her 10 coins because 10 in the Bible is a number of completeness and God is incomplete because nine is a number that is incomplete. God is incomplete without all of his children with him. You see, God is after you. God is after your children. As God was after the 12 apostles, as God was after Mary, as God was after Joseph, as God was after Paul, as God was after the prophets, as God was after Abraham, as God was after Moses, as God is after all of us, always searching for us. And God is never complete until he has us with him. As God is not complete until he has your loved ones with him. You may think they are lost, but God is after them and God will find them. That is good news and that is hope. You see, something was missing for God. The 12 baskets were lost, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. You see, that's why it's the number 12. Numbers in the Bible are very important. The 12 baskets refers to the 12 tribes of Israel. And we are the new people of Israel, the Bible t tells us. 12, 12 apostles. Again, refers to the church. We are the church and we are the fragments, the remnant. You see that over and over again in the book of Revelation. Uh, we, we, we are told that the ones who have survived the great tribulation, Revelation chapter 7 verse 14, are, are the remnant. We are the remnant, the leftovers. The, the real people of God are a remnant chosen by grace. We hear that in Romans 11.5. So something is missing for God. The 12 wicker baskets. And that's why God says, pick them up. I want my pieces. I want my fragments. God wants you. Because God is after his pieces. You see, the bread at mass is fragmented, right? And it is broken. We become pieces. We are broken into pieces. And it is the, the, the heart of God 
that tells you that you are that broken piece, the fragmented piece, and God wants to find you. You have been broken in many ways in this life through all that you have gone through, through the problems and the suffering. Mm -hmm. And God says in today's reading of the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus multiplies the bread and satisfies all of their hungers. Have the people recline. Now, in the Middle East, people eat by uh, laying down. It's They're like in a laying down position. When you go, to, uh, I was in 2019 in Israel and in, in the Holy Land, and people don't eat like we do with chairs and tables. They eat laying down, like in a bed. And he says to them, lay down. In other words, he's saying, Rest. I want you to rest. Stop going and looking for bread that doesn't satisfy your hunger. Rest. Let me feed your hunger. Eat my bread. And he gives them the five breads and the two fish. Now, the five breads, St. Augustine says, uh, refer to the five wounds of Christ and the two fish refers to the uh, water and blood that flowed from his side because that's how he feeds us. It's all allegory. Allegory is a way uh, to, to show us the meaning behind a biblical story. Now, uh, you see, he gives back life to the 12 wicker baskets filled with pieces and fragments. He gives them back his life, his life. Mm? Without Jesus, we don't have life in us. And he gives us his life through wounds, through his wounds. The church, and I love this image, is the basket full of fragments the leftover, the remnant, the ones who have uh, survived, who have uh, remained faithful in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of suffering, the ones who remain strong, who didn't give up their faith. And you, in the midst of your tribulation, whatever you go through, do not give up your faith. You are a beautiful, fragmented basket. We're not perfect. Hmm? There are no perfect members of the church. Fragmented pieces. You understand now? That's why we break the bread because Jesus turns us into his body at mass. You know, we are the body of Christ. And, and, the, and the bread that we receive, it's the body of Christ, but it's fragmented. That's why we're broken. We're not perfect. So like when people come and tell me and they say, Father, you say all the time, go to confession. I don't have any sins. Or maybe we should take the statue of Mary down and put you all, uh, up there since you don't have any sins. We're all sinners. We are all Feces producing machines. We all go to the bathroom the same way. All of us. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Even the Pope puts on his underwear the same way. Mm -hmm. He ain't better than you, okay? Nobody is better than anybody. We are all the same. Each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Not one of us is better than anybody else. And Jesus says, have the people sit down. Mm, have these broken people, these wounded people sit down, these depressed people sit down in the desert, these hungry people. Mm, and he doesn't give them perfect bread, mm, broken bread. The church is a broken bread with divorced people, mm, with people who have a criminal background, with people who've committed horrible things in their life, who've cheated, people who are depressed and anxious, who have a lot of problems and suffering, who are addicts. Mm? And that is the beautiful church. 
the church of God. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, have the people sit down, these people who have problems, people who have broken lives, he's talking about you and me. How many times have I heard from people, you know, I don't want a priest who shares his own problems. I don't want a priest like myself, you know, who says that he has an eating disorder and I go to a 12-step program um, and I go to meetings to get help for that. And I have gotten help for that because, you know, I used to weigh 325 pounds and things happened to me in my life. I was bullied and I went through a lot of things and that really damaged me. I'm a damaged person. And people don't like it when I share my, some people I should say, don't like it when I share my life and my struggles because they want a perfect priest because they want a perfect church and they want a perfect family and they want a perfect life. And there isn't a perfect priest. There isn't a perfect church. There isn't a perfect family. God didn't make you perfect. God make you, made you a human. You are not a perfect being. You are a human being. Mm? The church is not a museum for saints. The church is a hospital in the midst of a battle where the wounded come. It's a field hospital in the midst of war. Huh? And the wounded come to that hospital to receive the bomb for our wounds. And that bomb is Jesus. Huh? That is the church. Mm? We are all people who are broken and wounded. We're all the 12 baskets that were picked up. And how beautiful that the Lord loves us, just like we are, mm? and fills us with all that we need in that, in the midst of our brokenness. You are so loved just like you are, and I know that because I love you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm coming to you right now with a big kiss. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay. The Lord is with us. You're fine. Allow him to fill you today. As broken as you are, you know, in, in your life. And it's all good. Mm -hmm. Take in that presence. When I break the bread at Mass... I'm breaking Jesus, his body. And I always realize I'm holding the body of Christ, but that's the people. I'm part of this body of Christ. That bread, that body is me and you. Broken! But before I break it, I bless it. And so even though I'm broken, I'm blessed. And why am I blessed? I've always thought about that. Why am I blessed? Because where is the bread? It's in the hands. It's in my hands. And I am Jesus at Mass. I am the Altur Christus, the, the other Christ. It's Jesus who celebrates Mass in the person of the priest. That's the ancient teaching of the Holy Catholic Church. So where is the bread? The broken bread. It's in my hands. Oh, so even though I may be broken, I'm blessed mm, 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 because he's got me in his hands. Huh? He's got me in his hands. You may be broken. You get it? But you are in his hands. Everything is going to be okay. You got it? You know, I may have an eating disorder. I've got lots of issues, you know, as you do too. We all have them. But we're going to be just fine because we are blessed. He blessed us and he broke us. Mm -hmm. I always realize this, you know, uh, bread, when it's just whole, you can't really smell it. You can't smell it. It has to be broken. 
when my grandma takes the bread out of the oven, we don't really, um, we can't really taste it unless it's broken. And you can't eat it whole. You gotta, <clears throat> you know, bite into it. So it's gotta be in pieces. You get it? For you to really shine, you gotta be broken. Why does Father Adam shine? Huh? Because I allow myself to be broken. I, I don't hide my brokenness. You get it? Hmm? Don't hide your brokenness. Deal with it. Why do you think I go to a 12-step program for my own eating disorder? Because I'm not hiding it. Huh? I shine in my brokenness. I share it. I tell you what it is. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay? I deal with it. I talk about it. I'm vulnerable. Brokenness is vulnerability. It's those wounds of Christ. He exposed them and he fed us through his wounds. The five wounds. The, 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 the blood and the water flowing there. Huh? Do that in your own life. Get help for whatever you need and be open about it. Be open about anything and everything in your life. Don't hide it. Mm -hmm. You are the church. The church is not a building. And the church is a broken church, a wounded church, but a beautiful church. You may be broken and wounded, but you are beautiful. You are in his hands. Isn't our faith just beautiful? I mean, it's just wonderful to come and fill us with the hope that we need. I hope you're getting some hope right now in your own life that everything is going to be just fine. You know, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. He's feeding you. Huh? You know, wine in biblical times was poured on people's wounds because they didn't know uh, much about germs or anything like that, but they saw that the, the wounds, when people had wounds, that they would heal. That's why the Good Samaritan, which is really Jesus, God, he pours on the, on the man who is uh, assaulted and is left wounded and left for dead, he pours oil and wine on his wounds. So at Mass, we come to Holy Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and we have wound, wounds, all of us. And where are those wounds? Where are your wounds? Where are my wounds? Inside of me, through everything I've gone through in my life, right? You know, my parents' divorce, coming here to the United States when I was a child, going through the immigrant experience, all the stuff I've had to put up with in the church. Um, my eating disorder that I just told you about because I weighed 325 pounds and other issues that have contributed to me having this problem in my life, which I'm really dealing with. And thank you for your prayers. But where are our wounds? Where are your wounds? You know, your depression, your anxiety, where is it? It's inside of you. Hmm? You've been wounded through the divorce, through the, the, the experience of your husband or your wife cheating on you or the betrayal or whatever. Where are your wounds? They're inside of you. And what does Jesus pour in to your wounds and on your wounds? What does he pour on them? Himself! Because the wine at Mass is Jesus! We believe it's Jesus! It's not just wine. It's the blood of Christ. And it's poured into our wounds. Oh, hallelujah. He is the solution to our wounds. Take him in. Huh? Have, have taken that presence. Taken that presence right now. That holy presence. Come Holy Spirit, the comforter. Hmm? Be our comfort. When you go to Holy Mass, you receive the body and blood of Jesus into your wounds. Oh, I just love it. <sighs> mm. And I love you. And that's why I'm blessing you today with this word, with a big kiss, and with my prayers. I hope you know that I'm praying for you. I always pray for you every day. You live in my heart, rent free. You're not paying any rent. You know that, right? You live in my heart. And if you live in my heart, because I'm a priest. You live in Jesus' heart.
in God's heart. And that's the best place to be. You know, the best place to be in the world is in someone's thoughts and in their heart and in their prayers. That's the best place to be in the world. Not in Hawaii or, you know, on the beach. The best place to be is in someone's heart and thoughts and prayers. And you are in mine. I love you today and every day. And I hope you found some good news today that I know you can use from this biblical story of the feeding of the 5,000, the multiplication of the loaves, loaves and the fish. Allow yourself to be fed and satisfied. Recline. Have the people recline. Have them sit down. Allow them to be fed. He wants to say that to you through me. Recline. Mm? Mm. And take it in. As I bless you today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mwah. 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 Hello, hello.